Hey guys, it's Jeremy on the Wood Wildcrafter channel. Season 6 of the Wilderness Living Challenge with the Wooded Beardsman at the small cabin in the woods. Alright, 10 minutes to shooting light. Good morning on day five of season six of the Wilderness Living Challenge. Home based at the small cabin with Chris LeClaire, the wooded beardsman. And it's, uh, well, we just got up, it's 5.30. And Chris has gone to flip the power on. Um, so he's got a Apex power bank and some batteries and some solar panels. There's even a backup generator supplies power and I'll show you a little bit of what's going on over here. Chris is cooking up some breakfast, leftovers from last night. Got the uh, fire just started rocking here on the little wood stove and this was our coldest night. I think it was supposed to go down to minus two although it doesn't feel quite that cold out right now. So if you're just tuning in, we are here for one week of all you can eat, catch and cooks. So uh, we're supplementing with a little bit of other food, but we're mostly catching what we want to eat. And what else can I say? Uh, today's plan is to start with a morning deer hunt and turkey hunt. And then uh, we'll see what kind of other activities we get up to this afternoon. I think the uh, magic time for deer has passed, but I had a great coyote pass behind my stand a short while ago. By the time I sort of looked over my shoulder, I just saw his bushy gray tail going through. Uh, but I hear turkeys gobbling. Fall gobbler. Sort of over this way. So I might switch gears here and call a turkey in and uh, then if I have time I want to walk back to where I lost that crossbow bolt yesterday um, you'll have to go back to last week's episode to see what I'm talking about but I'm gonna go have a little kick around in the alfalfa field and see if I can turn it up and I have to go check the raccoon traps before I go back to the cabin I don't think they like my turkey talk Maybe not good enough. So, it's about time to warm up my toes. What time have we got here? Eight o'clock. It's a half hour past sunset, sunrise I mean. Probably magic time for deer is over. So, go warm up my toes, have a look for that bolt, and then. Uh, so many noises around and then I'll pack up and check the raccoon traps uh, I'm not really sure what we're going to do today but we do have a lot of geese to pluck and a raccoon to skin on top of everything else sun's on the trees look at how frosty the field is and all the plants on the edge here the wild carrot and the burdock tansy Raspberries. Burdock. Goldenrod. All carrying a coat of frost.
saw a gray squirrel come out of the corn patch and up that big maple tree, but uh, I don't see it up there now. It's too leafy. But it's like probably a good spot to just hide out and wait for them to forget that you're there. Maybe later. Well, I'm just going to see if the sun being on a different angle makes it easier to spot that crossbow bolt and all the frost on the ground. And Chris was saying that turkeys don't really behave like other birds when they're hit. Um, especially if it's a pass-through shot. So I am also going to walk over where they ran and uh, have a closer look around there as well. Although I'm sure if that turkey went down in the bush, probably a coyote got it in the night. But you never know. <clears throat> We've had raccoon guts and fish guts and goose guts and goose wings out in the bush for uh, three or four days and nothing's touched them so it's just hard to know he's going by I heard a lot of shooting this morning somebody was pounding away on the geese anyway I walked past two of the raccoon traps this morning on my way to the stand and I know they're empty so I cut through around the swamp and I'm just checking our other line. Let's see what we got. Two empty traps. And in here, another empty trap. There's a little uh, skim of ice on the pond water this morning. that cold last night. Getting wet pants traveling through all this swamp. Right, we're almost at the advanced live shot. And nothing. So we'll go see if Chris beat me back to the cabin and got that fire going. Warm things up a bit. Well, he's not back yet so I'll get a fire started and warm the camp up. So I came out to get some kindling and I saw a black squirrel run by. So I ducked into the cabin and I grabbed Chris's Ruger because my air gun was tucked away in my bag. And it popped out. And I got over here and there were two black squirrels. So I uh, took two shots, missed. And then it ran a bit and it stopped. I took a shot and I missed. I ran over and I couldn't see them so I sat down scanning the trees. Nothing was happening. So I started to come back to the cabin and I saw him run up the cedar tree. So I took a shot and he ran down the cedar tree and he ran over here under this dead balsam and he disappeared. So I came over and I could see he had jammed himself into this stump uh, which was a little more intact at the time and just his tail was sticking out so I thought he had died and I grabbed his tail and he burrowed himself deeper and part of his tail came off in my hand and uh, so I had to kick this stump apart to find him and he just wedged himself way down in the corner there um, and so then at that point it was like shooting squirrels in a barrel so now there's seven geese, one raccoon, two pigeons, a red squirrel, and a black squirrel on the meat pole. And uh, Chris is still not back yet, so I'm hoping that he's got a deer down, or got a turkey, or something exciting over there. And get back to back to getting this stove going. Got the fire going pretty good. So I'm going to process some black walnuts. I got these um, vinyl gloves at a hardware store. And this is my new and improved method because my thumbs were aching after I was hand ripping 
these uh, walnuts apart. So my new and improved method is to foot crush them to break the husks and that goes really fast. I'm sure there's a fancy machine out there that does this. Um, so we'll just crush, crush, crush. And then the husks are really easy to peel off after. And it's a big wild year. We're after all wild food. It's a wilderness living challenge. So we want to have as many chances at food as we can. So I'm also scattering the husks here by the small cabin for squirrel bait um, to draw in the black and the gray squirrels which of course are the same species but different phenotypes which just means they have a different color pattern and I just wanted to show you guys this method in case you were watching my earlier video and decided to go and hand husk a bunch of walnuts I uh, highly recommend not doing it that way because I've had thumb cramps for three days they've been brutal to the point where I'm almost dropping stuff and so foot crush, quick hand husking, and probably going two or three times faster than I was going earlier where I was just trying to hand rip them apart and killing my thumbs while I was at it. So much better method. If you've got some uh, tricks and tips on husking these walnuts, I'd love to hear them. Comments below. Got the grinder set up for later, eh? But oh. gonna move it out of the way. Yeah, I'm gonna move it for now. Yeah, but it's ready to go. Got a pan. Yep, grinder. What else do you need? I thought that was your cosmetic mirror. <laughs> I haven't seen myself in days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the raccoon skin cleaned, ready to debone. Yeah, grind. That's, That's gonna be supper. Chuck it in the grinder now. Lunch. Lunch is a big pot of leftover goose and some hot rice i'm hungry yeah we're having apples well, you, if you did want did you have a little bit of breakfast i ate a couple apples today uh i did have breakfast i, I case saved some fish and rice from yesterday yeah and, and I, i've been doing that and not eating my whole dinner so that i have yeah, something some left over for breakfast yeah because otherwise there's no time to do it before you go deer hunting and you had a quiet day at your stand yeah um I saw a grouse and squirrel. Yeah. And the grouse kind of, he was drumming on a log right beside me. Yeah. I don't have arrow. I never bring small game tips. I should start. Oh, yeah. Just for the grouse. Like I'm not going to shoot a squirrel or anything yeah, like that. Because yeah. it's their arrows are pretty expensive yeah. now, right? You throw, it's, we throw a, a $25 broadhead and a $25 arrow. Well, it's not, but it's about 10 bucks arrow. That's 35 bucks. Yeah. At a, at a bird. Yeah. Like, and you're not guaranteed to hit it. Yeah. <laughs> so... It's yeah, pricey, but uh, yeah, that's all I got. Um, haven't seen any deer yet. Turkeys no. the other day, but that was yeah. it. So we're working on our afternoon plan here while we eat lunch, which will probably be uh, another crow hunt. And we'll see what else. I'll keep you guys uh, up to date, carry the camera around, and then we'll be deer hunting again this evening. Catch and cook grasshopper. It's pro time. Oh, you're filming me? <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's pro time. How can you tell? All I can see is the beard. Oh, I thought you could see all the crows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hide in the uh, golden rods here at the edge of the field. Put our crows out in that sunny patch. Our decoy crows. And then... Uh, have a little hunt. There you go. Do you remember what the game plan is? Yep. What's shoot the game close. plan? Where do they get close enough and then shoot one? <laughs> shoot one. If you think you have a shot, take it. Okay. That's the plan.
Ready? Still ready. Okay, don't move. Okay. <laughs> I think I led them a bit too far. Did you? Well, they're like, they're hardly moving, eh? Yeah. That's it? That's it? Ah, well, let's sit here and try again. Yeah? Wow, you never know. I don't think they're going to come back, but... These grapes are too nice to pass up. Yeah, you can eat them. Just uh, spit the pits or don't. So we get a few wild grapes up in our area, but they're kind of few and far between. But we've been driving by a lot of grapes down here, and they're just too nice to pass up. And they're going to go good with some of our wild food, so see if we can fill this pot wild grapes look at all them grapes just kind of take them off the vine in bunches and I'll pick the dirty ones out later or pick the clean ones off maybe make some grape juice grape jelly dried grapes just uh, sliced my finger with my knife pretty bad seeing the blood on the two ends of the cut and it's uh, there's the blood but it's sliced right through so that's a good one I need, need some huh need help? no I just need some bush medicine there's a first aid kit. oh I'm I'm gonna go to this first aid tree actual, yeah I might put a band-aid on after uh, let's see white spruce and if I can do all my camera stuff here with one hand there's some gum down here that'll do it well this one's good this one's already sticky so oh, just uh there's my finger in the camera some spruce gum over that. Oop, she's bleeding pretty good. I think it's not my trigger finger. Oh, blood on YouTube. I'll get demonetized. First aid kit. Oh yeah, it's been in your car for how long? Never been used? Uh, maybe like 10 years. Oh yeah? Do you want something else besides a bandage? Mm, uh, maybe, maybe two or three. Two or three band-aids? Yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. Do you have a little wipe? What do you want? Just like a little... Antibiotics? Alcohol. No, like a swab. I'll just wipe it on a leaf. I'll leaf it. Oh, just... It's just a little... flap of skin, but it's hanging on. I didn't slice... didn't slice it right off, but... Uh, kind of goes to show you... how sharp the knife was. Thanks, work sharp! <laughs> I should be all right for now. Oops. Oops. 
you know, talk about how I've had my medical kit in my trunk for like 10 years and that's yeah. the first time I've ever used it. <laughs> Here's your camera back. It's got a full bucket. So I'll just pick one handed now. Just top it up. All right, second, second crow setup. And first one was a practice round today, so should be good this time. This is in front here, he's all geared up. And away we go. Car, car, car. Is this the bottom here? Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Last, last, last time was Jeremy's fault because he shot twice and missed twice. He shot <laughs> once. <laughs> and missed once. Just gonna be hiding over here. Ready when you are. trying to get the hang of it. There you go. Picked up some Broadheads couldn't match the mechanicals that Adam already had on his uh, bow, so I picked up these fixed blade ones and uh, so I'm going to rig up two extra arrows here, real quick. I also bought him some replacement arrows because of the one. He never recovered from the uh, alfalfa field. Ouch! Guess what? They're pointy. They're, uh, it's not very friendly packaging. One, two, and there's a little tightening tool in here as well. Get out of there. All right. Okay. So these arrows match the other arrow that I was target shooting with. So we'll do tight and I think what a smart guy would do 
is this one here that hit the dirt. A smart guy would leave that behind. And since I've got three broadheads and more than three arrows, I'll just set up three new arrows. Now, it sounds like they're combining the field that I was hunting. I can hear some uh, machinery working, so that kind of changes my plan. I was going to sit that field edge and pluck a goose and hope for a turkey or and a deer and instead I'm going to go to the squirrel stand and hope for a turkey and or a deer but what changes is I don't want to sit up in that stand and pluck a goose because there'll be feathers raining all all down and around and uh, that'll just be a big distraction for anything coming by so I'm just going to finish getting set up and then I got to get out there because we're running a bit late Nothing's eaten the gut pile yet stand when you're hunting but I wasn't sure if that second squirrel had fallen dead because it kind of did a little bit of a flip so I went down and picked up my first one which I knew was dead and I picked up the second one which also was dead there's a chipmunk making a little noise over here it's just about prime time so my eyes peeled because there could be a deer anytime. Well, it's cabin time. There was nothing but squirrels today. All right, we're in the we're in the barn, but the power's out, so I think that's going to make it easier because the pigeons won't know where to fly if there's any in here. Um, so. We're going to have at it, but it's kind of a little bit too dark for filming. So we're just going to do our thing and then I'll check back in. Zero. That is exactly how many pigeons were in that barn. So that was a pretty quick trip. 
no pigeons. Uh, good thing we got other meat on the pole. We weren't counting on them. So we're gonna get into some supper prep. Okay, here's the scoop. We have one cold raccoon and I'm going to debone it. And Chris is going to feed it through the grinder. And then we kind of had a little chat. I think we're going to cook it as just straight up ground meat. Yeah. We'll and then mix it with some wild rice and put some bear fat down on the bottom. Well, there's probably enough fat there. Put yeah. the fat down on the bottom. Yeah. And then <clears throat> maybe we won't grind the fat because that'll just come up the grinder. Yeah, I'll we'll trim just it. Trim it, have, have fat separate. And then put whatever we need to grease the pan down and then put the uh, raccoon fried in raccoon fat. <laughs> it's like that big YouTube meme for bear meat fried in bear fat. <laughs> it would work. Yeah. It will work. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll show you. For sure. Okay. It's pretty clean. There's not much hair on it. And the sooner we get this cold fat off, the better, because it's nice and clumpy right now. So I stropped and uh, honed my trophy bird knife on this um, work sharp, which I use all the time. They're super handy. And I'm going to be sanitary, at least on one hand, because I sliced my finger up so bad. I don't think I want to, uh, well, actually on second thought, I don't think the inside of this glove is very sanitary, so maybe, maybe I'm just going to just be careful. Gloves are gross inside, dude. <laughs> are they? Yeah. <clears throat> um, we need rice for them all? Uh, yeah, probably for one meal, eh? Because that's all that's left. There's like a half cup left. Okay. For one small meal. So, we'll just take off as much of this raccoon fat as we can without getting into the meat too much. A little bit fattier than I thought. It didn't look that fat when you were. Uh... I, I cut off like probably half of it. Okay. There was a probably two handfuls that are more that I cut off of it that we wouldn't want to eat. It's not worth eating. So here's ground raccoon all cooked up, browned the way I like it some brown wild rice and some brown maple syrup. Chris already wolfed down his uh, ground raccoon and now he's working on leftover goose. So also kept the woodchuckers here and said it tastes like ground beef. They're very ground beefy. <laughs> yeah and I thought it tasted like ground pork. You know what it wasn't, it wasn't overwhelming. No. No it was just ground beef. Yeah. Like a very lean ground beef, it wasn't greasy. You should have had some with the wadobo spice. Oh, like a burger. Whole other story. <laughs>